in addition to the fact <coughs> that the only party uh, that supports single-payer health care is the Green Party, uh, you can add that to the list of uh, what Chris was talking about. I'm going to talk a little bit about single payer health care. So let me start by asking how many of you people do not know what single payer health care is? Do not know. Sorry. Who do not know what single payer health care is? So a few people. So let me uh, give another term. It would be basically national health insurance or the euphemism that we like to talk about Medicare for all. Medicare is a program that uh, anybody who's over age 65, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, urban, suburban, able, disabled, anybody who's, who is over 65 is in the Medicare program, and it basically provides, if you will, national health insurance for the elderly in this country. Well, one simple solution, and I heard Amy Goodman say this comment, is we could solve the healthcare crisis in America by just changing the Medicare rule from under, from 65 to everybody. And if we change those two words from, from under 65 to everybody, uh, you could actually then cover Medicare for everybody. And, <laughs> the interesting thing is that, you know, people, at least in this, out there in the Republican and Democratic parties, talk about how great private health insurance is. And, you know, they sort of, suggest that because their healthcare proposals all revolve around forcing you or requiring you or choosing among private health insurance as your only option. And uh, when there was an opportunity during the healthcare debate, uh, President Obama was offered, asked many times, why don't you have at least a debate about single payer health care or Medicare for all? Because arguably it is the most successful program in the entire history of health programs in this country. Why don't we just build upon that? And uh, he was asked that, and he, ch he chose not to even have a debate about the issue. That is how powerful the pharmaceutical and insurance industry is, and how they lobby to try to influence the outcome of the Obama health care plan. How much money do you think they spent to influence this one piece of legislation? This industry. 50 million. 50 million? Any other thoughts? We have to cover all of us for a year. <laughs> <laughs> they spent 1.2 billion dollars. Think about that to influence one piece of legislation, this health care bill. They had more money than any of us could ever possibly imagine. And one of the reasons why your premiums are going up and your drug prices are so high, is that they want payback to pay to replenish their lobbying uh, uh, funds to pay for uh, influencing the health care bills. And that's one of the corruptions, if you will, of this crazy for-profit health care system that we've created. No other country in the world that spends, uh, well, no other country in the world spends anything like what we spend on health care or maintains a for-profit health insurance system like we do. So uh, we have a serious problem in this country. Now, uh, the reason why it's important for us to talk about single payer is that after the November election, it doesn't matter who wins, Republicans or Democrats, except if the Green Party wins, uh, the, uh, they're going to have what they call the lame duck session of Congress. And there's this thing called the fiscal cliff. I don't know if you've heard about this. But the fiscal cliff is this idea that we have such a huge budget deficit that we're going to have to, we're committed to cut $1.2 trillion out of the budget. That's a huge sum of money, $1.2 trillion. And uh, in order to do that, they're going to slash every governmental program, including Medicare and Medicaid, but also uh, virtually every other program, housing, uh, transportation, things that we all need and value in our society. 
Now, the reason why they're doing this is because the budget deficit is now $16 trillion, which is an astronomical sum of money. Why is our budget deficit so high? Well, there's basically two things that get bankrupt America because we were very robust economy. One is a war that we don't need, and another is a healthcare system that doesn't work. And our healthcare system doesn't work. We've tried it for 50 years of market-based medicine, and it's a failure. And the real, the real thousands and thousands of money in order to try to maintain this crazy healthcare system. So, um, just to give you some sense of that, this, how much do you think we will spend in healthcare costs this year alone in the United States? Of America? Two trillion. Any other thoughts? Three. Three trillion. Four. Four. Price <laughs> <laughs> right, is right. <laughs> well, it's not quite that bad, but it's two point eight trillion dollars we will spend this year. But interestingly enough, by the just in nine years from now, we will spend over four trillion dollars. We will basically double how much we currently spend. So over the course of the next decade, we will spend $36 trillion on health care. So you want to know why we're $16 trillion of debt? There are very few things that can bankrupt America, but the health care system is number one on that list that, because it doesn't work. Last week, a, non, a bipartisan or nonpartisan think tank that's highly respected called the Institute of Medicine put out a report, I don't know if any of you saw this, and they stated that the American healthcare system wastes $750 billion every year. $750 billion. So how does that waste, how does this waste get manifested? Well, give you an idea. I gave a talk at Penn Medical School, for example, and in the front row were some of the executives from the hospital system. And I asked these people in the front row, how much do you spend, how many people work in billing at the Penn Health System? And this is a decade ago, so you can imagine uh, what, what it's like. And how many people do you think they say spend their time? Not, these are not doctors and nurses or such. These are people who just push paper around and do billing at the Penn System. Any thoughts? 200. 200? Yeah. Any other thoughts? Four hundred. Four hundred? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. Any other? Yeah. <laughs> that big. Six hundred fifty people at Penn Health System. Now you multiply that by Jefferson, by Temple, by Hahnemann, by all these health systems, and you, you start to realize these guys are not. We're not hiring doctors or buying new equipment or building hospitals. We are hiring people whose only job is to push paper around and to get on the phone and ask permission to see if this, they will pay for this bill or not, or not. That's a total crazy system. How many people do you think work in Toronto General Hospital in Canada, a 950-bed hospital, the same size as the Penn system, who work in billing? How many people do you think work in 50? 10. 10? 10? Yeah. Two. Okay, <laughs> six, six people. Then they spend most of their time taking care of the bills of Americans who happen to get sick in the end. <laughs> That's how ridiculous the system is. Now I ask you this question. We spend twice per capita on health care than any other country in the world. Not 5% more, 15% more, 50% more. And when you think about it, we're talking not a, a million dollar difference between, let's say, us and Switzerland. But really, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of difference because we're talking about a $2.8 trillion uh, health care bill. Then you start realizing that the real way in which you can save money and actually do something about the deficit that we're fighting about in this country is to try to fix the health care system. The healthcare system is totally dysfunctional the way it is. And most Americans are totally naive about this. As far as they know, they pull out their card, they hand it to the hospital, and they hope and pray that it covers, you know, at least 
a good portion of their bill. Otherwise, they get stuck with this enormous co-pays and deductibles that they're stuck with. Well, guess what? Americans increasingly are getting stuck with co-pays and deductibles that are ridiculous. And no other country is, would even consider a plan like this. Under the Obama health care plan starting in 2014, you're going to hear all the stuff during the campaign that we're going to give quality, affordable health care for everybody. Well, let me tell you right now, it's not going to be so affordable and it's not going to be such great quality. The bronze health care plan, which I can't explain totally, only pays 60% of the bill. Who pays the other 40% of the bill if you buy a bronze plan? Me. You do. <laughs> And 40% of a hospital bill, let me tell you, is easily thousands and thousands of dollars. So you're going to be quite surprised, I think, that you might pet spend, let's say, for a family plan, $15,000 for, for a bronze plan, and you're still stuck with thousands and thousands of dollars to pay for your hospital bills. And you say, well, why don't I have health insurance? Well, you know what? This is not a great plan at all. In fact, in other countries, based on that criteria, every other country in the world would be appalled that any American would have to pay 10, even 10% 10 of, of money out of pocket for their health care. So the result, the point here, is that the rest of the world basically has platinum plus health care plans, and Americans, we're going to get these bronze plans, and we're going to pay twice as much as what any other country would pay through taxes for those plans. So the healthcare plan doesn't work in America. It's the reason why we have this enormous budget deficit that we're faced with, why we're faced with this fiscal cliff. And the, the secret, actually, of bringing, of bringing jobs back in the economy, interesting enough, I believe, uh, increasingly relies on figuring out how we do solve this healthcare crisis. It locates in America, they are also paying for the health care bills for all their employees. And when those health care bills are twice what the rest of the world pays in, their global, in the global economy, then they are really at a competitive end, uh, disadvantage. So increasingly, manufacturers are, are realizing that they are better off moving their manufacturing base out of America into other countries. And the reason why they, part of the reason why they do that, and part of the reason that is really under our control, is because our healthcare system is totally dysfunctional. And we're paying twice as much for those healthcare costs. To the point, for example, that General Motors and Ford actually pay more for healthcare than the steel that goes into their cars. So that's, what a great, you know, that's, some people say GM is actually an HMO that happens to make cars. That's, that's how crazy the system is. In this. We have got to fix this. And most of the American people are under this impression that, you know, single payer is socialized medicine, and it's a left-wing radical idea. And what I'm trying to tell you is that it's a very mainstream, centrist idea that actually respects the American people, gives them really what they want, which is quality, affordable health care, and, and it provides them interest enough, not just for some, but for all Americans. Now, in other countries like the national, you know, England, there is no co-patient deductibles. If you have a baby, you're not saddled with a $5,000 bill when you leave the hospital. Nothing. You pay nothing to have that baby delivered. And how is it, and not only that, but after you leave, they have a public health nurse who comes to your home who teaches you about, you know, breastfeeding and making sure to weigh your baby and make sure there's proper nutrition and make sure the kid is vac properly vaccinated and they guarantee all the medications for their child for free up to age 16. And guess what? England pays 100% less per capita on health care than we do. How is it possible they can do that? Because they have a national health service program, essentially like a single parent program that they make available for everybody in, their, in, in England. They are so proud of it that during the London Olympics, I don't know if you saw this, during the opening session, they featured the National Health Service as part of the opening ceremony. Can you imagine in America, where we have an opening ceremony, that anybody would try to do something about our healthcare system? People from those stands would be booing about how ridiculous our healthcare system is. So we should really hang our heads in shame that we know what the solution is, 
We, have, we know how we could save $750 billion in excess waste in our health system. How we could actually curve down the $36 trillion we're going to spend over the next decade in healthcare. And the secret, really, frankly, is based on a program that already works in America and is the most successful program for senior citizens. It's a Medicare program, but we need to provide it for all Americans. Thank you.